my wife gave me a quick tutorial on how to use needle and thread because I realized as I was leaving my house that my black diamond distance 15 was ripped probably from overloading it just all the time so I'm attempting to repair it here in the parking lot at Pole Creek in the Wind Rivers that's right I'm back at the Wind Rivers quicker than my mosquito bites could heal and this time I brought mosquito netting and spray. Aaron and Chase are actually up already by the mountain camping. They just couldn't wait to get out. But I had to do something today, so here I am, needle in hand, repairing my backpack in a dark parking lot. Tomorrow we're gonna climb Mount Harawer, and that's gonna be a near 30 mile day with about 6,500 feet of climbing. And step one in making this trip a success is fixing this backpack. Turns out sewing is not some fast paced, super sexy and glamorous thing to do. Man, it's tedious. Right now, Aaron and Chase are camped just beyond Island Lake, which is about 12 miles from my car. I'm sure they're just getting out of bed, turning on their jet boils, starting to press their coffee, having a discussion about where the beans were sourced and the acidity of the soil that it, they were grown in. I'm too tired, I didn't sleep last night, so I can't string together a sentence um, we'll see if I can string together a long climb and a hike and a adventure day. <laughs> we were hiking up last night. We realized that what's actually happening is that Danny sent us up with all of his heavy gear so he could just run up this morning. And so that was our job is we're the mules for Danny. They have the rope, the cams, slings. I've got my helmet harness, a couple locking carabiners some leashes and this is a heavy pack that definitely doesn't want to run so I'm doing this very fast shuffle which I've perfected over the years I warned you against camping I've always warned you guys Campy blows. I caught the boys. Uh, two miles out from the camp. They weren't at their campsite, yeah. but so they were close enough to the trail like to catch me. And it seems that I brought the rain, which yeah. is no good. But uh, mosquitoes, rain, yeah. hopefully those are the only things we encounter because lightning and thunder would yeah. be the worst. But now we're gonna join together as a team and head up the trail. Working our way up the basin. It's getting prettier and prettier. Just heard some thunder. It's starting to sprinkle. I can't wait to rope myself to the side of a cliff in a thunderstorm. <laughs> hasn't stopped but these guys are putting their camping gear down here and then we're gonna approach the base of the climb I think it's 50 50 we're going to, going to climb anything really good chance that I'll just be running back to my car here in the next hour and a half there is blue sky unfortunately mixed in with the blue sky is dark ominous clouds and thunder and don't want to be on that ridge line with lightning coming down.
stick to here until we get kind of just up behind it. Is that what you're thinking? Oh, the baby shot that I have is just around that chunky block of rock from the snow field. Oh yeah? Are you gonna come look at this? I think yeah. uh, I think the blue is where they went up and realized that wasn't a good route. Came back down. Oh, okay. Came back around on that route. Cool, cool. Sweet. So yeah, so just sort of yeah, drag it up. up. Yeah, right up there. This is where they're saying there's just tons of options. Oh, okay. Uh, the route will get more defined. If we get up on this first little shelf, can we traverse over to the blocky stuff? That's what I'm wondering. Or, or do we just get up to this little shelf right there so we can go right if we want? This is where the good stuff starts, and it only took 16 miles for me to get to this point. So at least 32 miles of round trip, plus about 10 pitches of climbing. No big deal. And then I have to get home before 12 or my wife will be so upset. I'm guessing 50% up the route. It's been fun so far, you know? So, so fun. We've each taken turns, so it's been fair. But now chase the serious guys up front. So there's a number of pitches that we've gone up. There are a couple things that are certain. One is that the rock is awesome. The views are amazing. The other is that as soon as I put my jacket on it, it's gonna get warm. And as soon as I take it off, the wind is gonna start blowing and it's gonna get cold. So basically, we're three times less likely to get struck by lightning, but Still. if we do, we all get struck. Yeah, and then we'll dangle here like rearview mirror ornament. All right, we're taking shelter from a small rainstorm and getting ready to do this, hopefully, last little push to the ridge. Been on a ridge, a different kind of ridge, a shoe ridge instead of a climbing shoe ridge. This was the perfect level of difficulty, but this has been great. A lot of fun. Day's far from over, but just need to get to the top, then I can ditch these two and run as fast as I can back to my car. That looks chassis bellis, isn't it? Yeah. Climbing mean, was insane. spectacular. Like, great exposure, okay. really good rock. Protection was a little tricky. Everything was like flared cracks. 
But other than that, it went really fast. It was really enjoyable. We're up near the top, it's getting windy. And our dogs are barking, so it is time to change shoes. Give our feet a break. And then I'm gonna scramble up to the summit. The top, my toes are killing me. My toes are killing me, and that is why. Doesn't look pretty, but life isn't pretty all the time. You're good, Chase. Oh, that's it. Winter has its avalanches, and summer has its thunderstorms. We just got to the top of Inglewood. And right when we got there, I felt something on my head that I've never felt before, a buzzing static right on the crown of my head. And all of us kind of felt it on and off. It was a mad scramble for some meager cover, which still conducts electric. Today, so we just topped out. The climb was amazing. And then the scariest thing ever happened, which is all three of us pretty much at the same time had our, our heads sparking from electricity. And uh, it was kind of unexpected because I haven't seen any lightning. It freaked us out. So we're hunkered down in hopes that it'll pass quickly and we can get off of this mountain. Well, the clouds cleared and we're coming out of our little caves. Um, looks like we're safe. No more buzzing of gear or um, kind of that electric shock feeling in the back of the neck. So we're gonna get off this peak as quick as we can. Metallica has an album called Ride the Lightning. And after experiencing that, I never ever want to ride the lightning. But that's the summit, that's the climb. Now, the quick, quick, quick descent to relative safety in the lowlands. We had a windy farewell and we parted ways, headed back to the trail. They're headed back to their camp. And I felt as if with that whole electrical charge business, I felt like at the summit, nature was holding a gun to our head, like a crazy person. And we just weren't sure if she was gonna pull the trigger or let us live to see another day. The good news is no lightning ever struck near us, but it was definitely prepping for some lightning strikes. Anyway, I'm headed down to Island Lake. I've dropped down from the saddle between Inglewood and Elephant Head. And I'm hoping, even though I should have learned from last week, I'm hoping that this is a quick and easy descent. That's Harrower Peak, 32 miles, 10 pitches, 7,000 feet of climbing, all in one day with an assist from Chase and Aaron. My stitch job was magnificent, totally held together. We just walked off of Harrower Summit, AKA Ellingwood. Here's the ridge we climbed right here. Chase should really tilt the camera a little bit. So it looks even steeper. Wrong way. No, nope. you were you were right. <laughs> End the day with a little ski. Don't mind if we do.